Warning, the following podcast contains adult language and childish comedy. Listener discretion is advised. And now, please adjust your headphone volume to an unreasonable level and enjoy the most dynamic and electrifyingly entertaining podcast ever to conquer cyberspace. Hello, friends, and welcome to the most powerful podcast ever created, the amazing pop culture podcast starring Dags and Rez. And somewhere deep in cyberspace is, wait a minute, he's here. He's actually in the barn. DJ Micah Rez. Hello, Dags. Hello, amazing friends. Been a while since I've been in the barn. It has. What's up? How are you? How are you feeling? How are you doing? Uh, I'm feeling great. I'm feeling alive, feeling young, vigorous. What does vigorous mean again? I don't know. All right. You're vivacious, vigorous, you're virile. Virile, yeah. Yes. You're victorious. Anything else that starts with a V, that's what I am. You're very. 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 Very DJ Micah Hello, friends. Welcome back. Welcome back to the most powerful podcast ever created. If you're new to this podcast, what it is, it's me and DJ Micah Rez talking pop culture. Now, Micah or DJ Rez, a powerful TV show we're going to be talking about today, She-Hulk. Also, we have powerful pop culture news, and we are going to enlighten and entertain the audience. That's right. Speaking of entertainment, hopefully you've subscribed to our YouTube channel. We had a couple of videos come out and we have some shorts. Yes. Brand new shorts. We're wearing new shorts. Shorts. Yep. And we just just recorded a new one today. So that one will be coming out shortly, but go ahead and uh, enjoy my review of Bush Light and Mountain Dew. It's taking the world by storm. It is. The video. It is. Yeah. The video is. Take a look at that. Subscribe. Share with a friend. Share Powerful. with a family member. Powerful. Now let's get into it, DJ Mike Rez. The hottest news right now is <laughs> Snoop Dogg's new breakfast cereal. What? Snoop Loops. <laughs> Snoop Loops. I like it. Yes. Is it uh, infused with anything or is it just like honey oat cereal? It is more corn, more flavor, more marshmallows. What? Yes. Marshmallows. If you like Fruit Loops, then you will love Snoop Loops. <laughs> they fruit flavored? Yes, I'm assuming. Wow. More corn, more flavor, more marshmallows. Fruit Loops with marshmallows is basically what we're getting with Snoop Loop. Snoop Loop. Brilliant. Snoop Loops or Snoop Loop? Snoop Loops. Snoop Loops. That's awesome. Yes. I didn't know that that was happening. Oh, it's happening. Oh, man. Does Martha Stewart have anything to do with it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure she does. They're best friends, you know. Yes, I know. It has a shank in the bottom of the box. Oh, it, just in case <laughs> your best <laughs> yeah. friend that yeah, likes cornflakes comes over and they want yes. to fight you. Break just in case. It's got like a little glass window. Oh, yeah. Yeah, cereal doesn't have that anymore. They used to have powerful windows. You could see what's in there. You know, snacks used to have that. Mm-hmm. And then you see like Doritos has a fake window. It looks like you're looking into it, but it's just a picture. It, it looks full. Oh, you know, it looks full. <laughs> it's not. Yeah. And what's the deal with the size of everything? Have you noticed how everything's shrinking down, but the prices keep increasing? Yeah. You, I notice that with cereal all the time. You get like 10.5 ounces now. What I do like, though, is they're actually in bags. Back in the day, it was like waxed paper. Do you remember that? <laughs> yeah, I do remember that. You'd Horrible. A lot of it. Yeah. Once you rip that, you're done. There's sugar smacks or sugar snacks. They always came in. Sugar the, smacks. Like a foil lined bag. Bag yes. or something. What the yes. hell was that? that yeah, was... that was powerful to protect it from EMPs. Oh, was that what it was? <laughs> yes. They didn't want their cereal to taste more no. shitty. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, now I think it's called uh, honey smacks because sugar sounds bad. Yeah, sugar smacks. Yeah. They used to call them just sugar cereal. Yeah. It was back in the day when you had real sugar in your cereal and then you yes. just load it up with more sugar. Yes. Now Our it's kid. high fructose corn syrup. Mm. Yes. It's made of corn, you know. But but Snoop Dogg says here first thing he says about it is more corn. More corn. Yes. Because more he likes, corn, likes the corn farmers. More corn, more flavor, more marshmallows. I can't wait. Is there a picture of him on the box? Yes. <laughs> Why like is he squinting? Big doobie. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a family business. Oh. Yes. Claiming crips on the, yeah. on the box. Rotus Foods. <laughs> it's a family-owned food product company. 
Brodus Foods. Yes. That's his last name, yes. his real last name. A movement to make a difference in the lives of families and communities and through its support of charities. You know, they don't actually call it cereal. What do they call it? Cizereal. Whoa. Yeah. Not a lot of people know that, but now they do. Yes, now they do. <laughs> now, what do you got, Mike, or DJ Rez? Oh, man, I, there's a uh, movement uh, going around, or not a, really a movement, but something happening in the video games world where they're remaking and re-releasing 90s classics. I've got the top 10 list according to ScreenRant.com on our video games from the 90s that they want to see come back. Number 10 is Ghostbusters 1990. It was released back then. Uh, it was uh, a show or a, a game that was not very popular at the time because by 1990, a lot of the Ghostbusters uh, fire was out by then. Uh, but the game, uh, as people look back at it, was uh, they, they miss it. It's got good, good graphics, bright graphics. User controls were easy. And they fight increasingly difficult series of bad guys. Now, do you honestly remember that game? I do not. You can play as Peter, Ray, or Egon. Who would you pick? Oh, you got to pick Ray every time. Number nine. You'll you probably like this one. I don't know if you ever played it, but Doom Two: The Building of a Dynasty, nineteen ninety two. Doom Two. Doom Two. If you can always go Doom Two. Uh it's a PC game. And uh, it was part of the Dune franchise at the time. But they're saying as the graphics would probably seem a little primitive today if they remade Dune 2. Uh, so we're not talking Doom. We're talking Dune. Dune. Yeah, Dune. D-U-N-E. Yes. Yes. Number eight, Flood, 1990. Back to Dune. Does it have any info on it? Uh, like as far as who you could play as? or Yeah, just the premise. Um, No. It was just said it was groundbreaking when it came out. It was a world strategy game. It does an excellent job of pitting resources against a random series of events, and it draws cleverly from the book and movie franchise as well. Good. Number eight, Flood, came out in 1990. This is uh, one of the obscure games of the 90s. It's uh, an imaginative platformer that allowed a user to control Queefy. There's a green blob creature that navigates levels by collecting trash. As the game progresses, the levels can fill up with deadly water, which is where the game derives its name from. So that's Flood. Number seven. Let's go back to that. <laughs> a character named Queefy yep. is in a, a maze, tunnels, what is it? Uh, yeah, it's uh, the levels fill up with water and you try to collect trash as the water floods your level or trash. How did you, how do you come up with that premise? You're high a lot. Yes. Yep. Yes. Probably eating Snoop loops. Yes. So infused with something else, getting your Doritos on. (laughs) (laughs) We're going to have to get that game. Yeah. I think we, well, yeah, if they ever make it flood flood. Yep. Starring queefy. It uh, doesn't say which platform it was on. That's too bad. Don't know if it was Genesis or. Well, it wasn't there a flood in Genesis? Oh, maybe. All right. The Neverhood, 1996. It was a 90s, uh, was a time of great imagination, Dags. Uh, The Neverhood was a prime example of a truly off-the-wall title. The game follows Clayman, who journeys through his strange land to learn about his purpose in the universe. It was a point-and-click adventure game that is generally considered one of the best cult classic games ever made, and it is seared in memories of many gamers because of its weirdness. The graphics were derived entirely of claymation, and it has a cartoonish yet appealing visual style. Uh, though fans often demand it be put on platforms like Steam, the, Neverla- the Neverhood what is still a wall from anywhere and cannot be found. I do enjoy claymation. Claymation is a uh, lost art that doesn't. Gum, Gumby and Pokey. Uh, Wallace and Gromit. Yes. Is that the only like claymation you can find these days? It's... Do you remember uh, David and Goliath? No. You're going to need to look into that. David and Goliath. All right. Number six, WWF Attitude from 1990. Now we're talking. 
the wrestling video games. Uh, but this was the one that personified the Attitude Era back in the 90s. Is that your favorite era? It was the most entertaining era, that's for sure. I still uh, WWF in the 80s because that's when I grew up with the Nick Bockwinkles and the Jerry Blackwells. And the- well, you know, Nick Bockwinkles, AWA, originally. Yeah, yeah. yeah Twin, C- Twin Cities. Yep. Powerful wrestling background. Oh, yeah. My grandma used to get yelled at to sit down because she was too busy standing up yelling at the wrestlers. Good for her. Yeah. She was uh, didn't speak a lick of English, but she loved her wrestling. Yes. So, yeah. So, we're, uh, we're anxiously awaiting WWE's Attitude Era to come back out. But right now, there is no plans for that. Number five, Mischief Makers, 1997. It was a game on Nintendo 64. Um, and it featured 2D platform style. The game was a bit of an old and new on N64. Visually, the game featured stunning colors and character designs, and it took advantage of the full range of abilities that the N64 was capable of. Though many games from that era have been resurrected by Nintendo, Mischief Makers was not one of them. Indiana Jones Greatest Adventures, that comes in at number four, and this one. Uh, was part of a trilogy uh, of the game. The game brings to life the original Indiana Jones films through a series of exciting platforming levels. That one actually seems kind of, that would be kind of fun to play. Yeah, I'm just thinking the the theme music would be cool. That was on the SNES, the Super Nintendo. Yes. Number three, Illusion of Gia, 1993. Uh, That falls somewhere between the fantasy and historical fiction game the user takes control of a man named will who ventures out to various wonders of the world to discover the secret tower of babel whoa looks looks medieval so we have floods and tower of babel and yeah a lot of biblical stuff it's uh an early version of role-playing game in 16-bit graphics what's it called again it is called illusion of gia g-a-i-a hmm uh, Smash TV, 1990. That sounds familiar. It was a, not to be confused with Spike TV. No, not at all. God, was that a great network? <laughs> uh, though it is unbelievably 1990s in style, Smash TV is still an arcade hit that did pretty well on consoles. One or two players team up to take on hordes of enemies as they compete in gruesome reality show that pits a, its contestants against each other in a battle to the death. That sounds like something I would do yes. now. Sounds powerful. That what awesome. was that? Uh, what was that show? Where it had the? It was a Japanese show. It had the voiceovers, and they all had to do the obstacle. Oh yeah, yeah, that was great. I can't remember the name of it. It was on like late at night, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I can't remember. That was funny though. Yeah, look that up. It was. Uh, I remember one of the characters, Baba Ganoush. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, they had like the play by play. Extreme. Guys. What was it? Extreme. Look it up. Extreme. We, uh, challenge you hate it when you're like yeah, on. i know i should have looked it up oh just when you're on like yeah. a, a search engine then you like clear it and you're like oh wait yeah. that's where i want to be all right let's see japanese most extreme challenge or something like that most extreme elimination challenge was the name of it i'm just coming up on a yep it is a uh, silly japanese game show in which contestants are painfully Eliminated through barely possible stunts and events. Yes, great show. <laughs> Most taking place above pools of mud. Yes. <laughs> that was a great show. Yeah, that's awesome. They have uh, all the people that uh, did the voiceovers. And they have, like, one, one woman here. She did all the, all the female voices. <laughs> yeah. I, I can imagine when she used to cheer and everything. Yay! Right, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of voice actors that are just uh, credited as various characters, various characters. Oh, that was a great show. <laughs> I can't remember. what That must have been on, like, Spike TV or what were some of those other channels? It was Spike TV and they had... UPN. Yeah, UPN and all those weird ones that aren't around anymore. Yeah. Yeah, those would be good streaming WB. channels now. Like, like you have Pluto TV and you have, you know, some of those off yeah, the streaming ones. channels. Yeah, I bet Spike TV would be a good, like streaming channel now because you can get some of those off the wall and some mainstream movies on some of those tony hawk was a voice really that. yeah it is geeks captain must have been the name one of the teams 
That's hilarious. He's like the biggest name. Vic Romano. That was the name of one of the yeah. the uh, yeah. play-by-play yes. people. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome you remembered that. Yeah, it was a great show. Uh, number one on the list for games people want to be re-released or remade now, Jackie Chan's Action Kung Fu from 1990. Uh, this was for the SNES, um, and you could uh, star as Jackie Chan in an action beat em up style platformer with memorable Nintendo graphics. It kind of looks like, um, remember Double Dragon? Oh, absolutely. It, yes. That's what I get out of it. Also it looks like Karate Champ. Oh, yeah. One thing I noticed about, I don't know what that style is, but they when they made everyone look like little cute cartoon characters. Right. With Remember they used to try to make them look r- as realistic as they could in 8-bit. Mm-hmm. But then they got down to that, I don't know if it's a Japanese thing, I'm sure it is. I don't know anything about it. But they, you know, like the Funko Pops and... Like right. up there, they make oh, that, yeah. you know, they make that, the big head and the little body and they make yep. it real stylized. Yeah. These are just basically Funko Pops that are yes. moving. So yep. if you guys know what that style is of animation in video games, please let us know. And the best way to let us know is on Twitter. Follow us at Amazing Pop Pod. Also follow us on Instagram. And of course, subscribe, like, and comment on our YouTube channels. We're trying to get the YouTube channel off the ground making powerful videos and wherever you listen to podcasts, please leave a review, leave a rating. Five stars is the highest. If you leave five stars, like your DJ res will tell you about his cribbage boards. Hmm. That's right. It's a secret. Yes. So that was the top 10 video games. We wish they would bring back from the nineties. Now, Mike or DJ res, you got uh, Iron Man news. Isn't that true? That is correct. You are right, as always. This is uh, straight from comicbook.com, uh, which I did not know existed till today. Um, there is a new Iron Man comic book series coming out. So when you go on your comic book runs, yes, you'll have a new one to look for in December. Yes, we have a couple of comic book run videos on powerful YouTube channel, and I made a short at a powerful variant Variant is where they have a different cover. Right. Usually rare, not always. It's the one you found rare? It is. Is it? Yes. Awesome. Well, people have to go look at the show yes. to find it out. Um, so Iron Man is celebrating 60 years this year. Did you know wow. that? Wow, no, I did not. That's Yeah. Tony Stark doesn't look a day over 40. He doesn't. Oh, he looks great for He's got a age. bad ticker, though. That's what I hear. Yeah. That's what I hear. Um, so right now they are uh, in the middle of a... Iron Man run of stories, um, and starting in our November will be the the issue uh, of the the last issue of the storyline. Now that Iron Man's involved with, that'll be Iron Man number seven fifty. It's a lot of it. <laughs> really is. <laughs> it's a whole lot. Um, but what they're going to do now is they're going to uh, in December you're going to get Invincible Iron Man. Uh, this is going to you're going to see Tony Stark at his lowest point of his life, Dex. He's lost all of his money. Okay. He's lost all of his friends. Is he drinking? I'm sure he is. Because in the comics, he had a bad drinking problem. Yeah. I mean, he's hit rock bottom or so, I think. Oh. Yep. It can get worse. So with all that gone, his fame is gone, his collections are all gone. This is going to be a John Wick style. There's going to be a John Wick style bounty on his head with all of the evil headhunters coming for him placed on him by an unknown villain that will be coming out in this series of Invincible Iron Man. I'm looking forward to it. You imagine, all you have to do is kill Tony Stark's dog, and then he's going to kick everyone's ass yes. and shoot everybody in the head with two, two shots. How do you feel about the character Iron Man? Is he in your top five? Yes. Yeah. Pretty when I was cool. a kid, I thought Iron Man sucked. You did. After the movies came out. He became one of my favorite superheroes. Yeah. I should get you some to read. Some read Iron it. Man yeah, some, comics? Yeah. You should do that because yeah. I bet I would enjoy those. Look now. behind you there. He uh, looks like he wants to shoot me in the face. Yes. Yeah, that's they look uh, very angry. That's uh, Avengers Age of Ultron poster picked up at a thrift store. Pretty epic, huh? What is that made out of? Aluminum? Uh, linoleum. Oh, linoleum. My favorite. Aluminium. 
Now, are, you, are you British? Yes. Oh, okay. I didn't know. Yes. That. That's a powerful poster, isn't it? It is a very powerful poster. Yes. And I'm going to show you another thing. This is going to be a powerful segue. Are you ready? I'm ready. Talk amongst yourselves. Oh, man, I can't wait. Can't wait. Da-na-na, da-na-na-na. For those wondering, he is digging in the back. Oh, my goodness. Look at this. This is a She-Hulk comic book that is in a case. Look at that. From February 1st. This is number one. Oh, my God. 1979. That is nice. You must have found that on one of your uh, comic book runs, I'm, I'm assuming. As far as comic books go and Marvel and superheroes, where does She-Hulk rank when, when She-Hulk originally was I actually introduced. bought that in 1979. That's how old oh, I Oh, did you yeah, really? That's the original. Oh, I yeah. thought you like found that on no, one of your runs. No, That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah, mostly all these are from back in the day. Because you can't grow up. No. No. I'm a Toys R Us kid. <laughs> oh, man. Poor So Jeff I'm Lee. sorry. So what were you saying about She-Hulk? How does she rank? Yeah, I mean, when she, was, when she first came out, how was she re- received? Not good. Really? I mean, it's, <laughs> it's a lame character. I mean, I just happened to have that issue number one. I don't know right. why, because it was number one, so I bought it. It was cheap when you bought it yeah. back then. Yeah, so, let's get into, so let's get into the TV show. All right. The uh, She-Hulk is the new Marvel uh, TV series that is out on Disney+. Plus. We're introducing She-Hulk into the Marvel Universe. I do not know how she's going to play out in the movies that will be coming out, but usually these series have a tie-in to a movie or two that will be coming out. So we'll see how this goes, but it takes place after the events of end game. Um, and it's Bruce Banner and his cousin, his cousin, the lawyer plays who's she Hulk. In the first episode, you get introduced how she became she Hulk and her, I don't even know if you could call it, uh, her struggle <laughs> with being a Hulk. Not yet. Anyway, um, they kind of fast tracked, uh, the first episode, I think, as far as like getting through some of the the messier stuff, like with Hulk and Bruce Banner trying to balance the Hulk and Bruce Banner life. It took him like 15 years, 10 movies to get through uh, how he finally came to terms with his Hulkness. And in the first episode of She-Hulk, she got in terms with her Hulkness in like 30 seconds, which just seemed like a very odd thing to do but she's fighting sexism as a lawyer she's fighting other attorneys as a lawyer um and she is the end of the first episode she is uh fighting her first villain as well so what did you think what did you first of all what did you think of the origin story the origin story first i gotta know how close to the original origin story was that because if that's the original origin story that was lame it is not okay it's lame it's very lame i agree yeah, so spoiler alerts, we're going to have we're going to talk a little bit about the episode. So <laughs> The only thing I thought was cool is it reminded me back of the old 70s Hulk TV show. Do you remember how he first became Hulk? No, I don't. I I remember watching it, but I just remember like seeing Lou Ferrigno just Yes. So he's on the it's rainy on the side of the road and he's trying to change his tire. <laughs> and he whacks himself with the and he becomes the Hulk. Oh. Yes. I think I vaguely yeah. remember that. So now, he yeah. was, uh, in the comic book, he basically got nuked, you know. Right. That's how he got the gamma radiation. But in the TV show, they changed his name from Bruce Banner to David. Yeah, I do yeah. remember that. Yes. <laughs> and uh, he was he was a Dr. David Banner physician trying to tap into the hidden strength that all humans have. <laughs> so a startling metamorphosis occurs. So he, he ba- basically blasted himself with gamma radiation. Right. Trying to, for some reason, unlock the strength of all humans. <laughs> and then, uh, then he was on the side of the road with a flat tire and tire iron wax himself, and then he becomes a Hulk. That seems legit. Yeah. <laughs> all right, back to She-Hulk. Yeah, so She-Hulk, she becomes uh, She-Hulk. They get into a car accident because of a spaceship. So Bruce and his cousin are driving around, uh, going on vacation together, and uh, a spaceship kind of falls in front of their car, and... She drives off the road and they flip over and she gets out. She's trying to get 
Bruce Ban Bruce Banner because he's found a way to turn himself back into uh, Bruce Banner using a device that he's Sweater has, Hulk. has to wear on his arm. Uh, and he's bleeding, and she's got a cut too, and some of his blood gets into her cut, and that tr- transfers Hulkism uh, into uh, into her, and now she's a Hulk lawyer. You ever seen like uh, Caveman Lawyer on Saturday Night yes. Live? This is what this is. Well, that's what's Caveman Lawyer. It's Ally McBeal. It's uh, yeah, with Space Ghost. You know, right? <laughs> yeah. So she has now got the power Birdman to turn lawyer. into a what Hulk. Was it? Yeah, and. Uh, yeah, Bruce Banner has got to fight Hulk. It's like he's two separate people. She's She can control it, can turn into her to She-Hulk whenever she wants. She talks. Well, like, she can control it because she's a woman, and she's used to getting yeah, catcalled and <laughs> mansplained. Yes. Yeah, so that was, uh, I don't know, it just seems odd. Like they, they didn't want to have her, because it's a series, they didn't want to have her have the same struggle because they got to get, her controlling it faster and they don't want to spend 10 years explaining her stories. Why does when she becomes the Hulk, her hair straightens out and it gets longer. Yes. That's what I was trying to wonder. And her clothes tear, but they, they don't rip off like Bruce no. Banner's. So, and then he, and she doesn't wear purple jeans. No, like the Hulk always has purple jeans. Right. Yeah. She look wears, up at the poster. I see it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. It's span, is that his spandex? Because you know your best friend. Look is over spandex. there. What are they wearing? Purple. One of <laughs> one of them is torn. Though. One of them has got like purple jorts on. The other one's yeah, torn. The other one's showing off his kneecaps. Yes, like a sexy bitch. So what, what are we thinking about She Hulk? I thought it was horrible. You know, and I tried. I'm. I didn't even get into the whole comic books and all that because they have to change stuff. Right. With the comic, the character I always thought was comic book character was lame and. You know, and they have to get into the comedy, but I think go all in on the comedy or not. I don't know. I mean, because who's going to watch this show and take it seriously? You know what I mean? I don't know who, who they made it for, who their target audience is. I don't think it was us. No. But we could watch it. I mean, if something's funny, it's funny. I didn't, the jokes didn't land for me. I didn't like, it, it just, it felt like a, I don't know, like it had that 90s Allie McFeel vibe but then i had that whole i don't know i just didn't i didn't like it no and their characters are like uh, i don't know feuding siblings really they fight each other they're mean to each they call each other names and yes they have no on-screen chemistry no you don't believe that they're related you don't believe they're cousins you don't believe they even like each other in real yeah. life it's just it's weird and it had this weird vibe like we were talking about those different channels. Like, what would this be on? Be like Dawson's Creek or something. You know right, what I mean? Yeah. It had that whole the Hallmark Channel. Yeah, Buffy <laughs> the Vampire Slayer. Yeah, it's definitely a WB. Yeah. <laughs> type of show. Yeah, the UP and all those UPN. Yeah, yeah UPN. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was. It was weird. It didn't and land I, right. Yeah, and I just I tried to watch it. You know, not getting into all that. You know, the nerdy stuff. And I don't. I don't know. I didn't like it. Yeah. Well, what's kind of nice is now that they're scraping you know scraping the barrel so to speak as far as characters to keep the mcu going i can look at it and go i've never heard of this character and why does this character exist and just it's it's lame but it's enough of a train wreck where i'm going to watch the other episodes just to see how bad it's going to get and you wonder how much they have invested because they want to put it into the, the mcu oh absolutely yeah that's the the problem with these series is they tie in to like I said, the next movie or the next two movies or whatever. And if you don't watch it, you're going to be kind of lost, you know, for a little bit of the movie. Then I also wonder, you know, if a character is not strong enough to be in a movie, they figure, oh, we can make a buck off of a TV show too. Sure. Yeah, maybe that's what's, maybe, maybe this is all we're going to get is a TV shows. How do we know about Ms. Marvel? How's that doing? I honestly don't, I didn't watch that. Yeah. I, I was I was just not interested in that one. Yeah, because whenever the whenever they come out, you know, you get both sides fighting about it, and this sucks, and this is cool, and you're a hater, right? So I didn't even try to get into that, but no, I didn't. I just didn't feel it the need to. I wasn't interested in that one. I was interested in She Hulk. Um, Why were you interested in She Hulk? Just because I knew uh, Mark Ruffalo was going to be in it. You like him as an actor, yeah. Not, and it's not because he plays a character with my name in Spotlight. Whoa. Yeah. So 
The only movie I liked him in was Collateral. He was good in Collateral. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't I didn't like what they did to the Hulk. The MCU they really made the Hulk lame. Yeah. It started out he's he's this powerful raging character. The more angry he gets, the stronger he gets. But they just got rid of him. I don't know why. They made him weaker and weaker and 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 I know that Professor Hulk, the sweater Hulk is in the comic Smart books. Hulk. Yeah. But that doesn't yeah. make it right. It was lame there too. Yeah. It the was... Hulk is just a big green medicine. You don't have to like him, but that's what he is. And I, I don't I don't like how you always have to change characters. I'd rather have just start a new character. Yeah, it's it's getting to the point where I'm hoping that after these next couple of phases, that's kind of it for Marvel because, like you said, there here comes She Hulk, and then yeah, what Mister Marvel or yes. whatever's coming out, and Wonder, or Man. Wonder Man, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just who the hell is Wonder Man? Yeah, and they always they always have to change it. Like, oh, Wonder Man, what he has a convenience store. Yeah, and <laughs> he helps the community. Right. He opens a he opens the jars for the little old ladies that can't open it. <laughs> Wonder Man, can you open Wonder this? Wonder Man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's getting. Yeah, they're what do they call it? Jumping the shark. Yes, they might be jumping the Hulk on this yeah. one. And I, you know, you you reach a point where. You know, like where they kill off half the characters. That'd be cool. Just first of all, everyone's getting burned out on superheroes, I think. Yeah. But everyone likes the core Spider Man. The Hulk, they need to reboot the Hulk, bring him back. Superman, you know, a couple, but the Ant Mans and the She Hulks and no. Yeah, the outliers can go. Yeah. If they're, I think there should be like a rule if their comic books didn't, didn't generate X amount of dollars, don't make them into a character, into a movie or a TV show. What's that now? That if their care if their comic books didn't make X amount of dollars, well, you know, like like Ant Man has his own comic book series, right? Yes. Yeah. Well, he's not a great superhero character, so don't yeah. make him. I mean, I'm just saying there. No, no, I, I get should what you're be going like at. internally. Marvel at. should be. I like, get what you're going at. Well, Wonder Man, nobody likes him. Why are we making a movie or a TV show about him? So, Mike or DJ Rez, out of five high heel shoes, what are you giving? <laughs> I was she getting Hulk. two high two. heel shoes. That might be too high. Whoa. Get a, give him a pair of high heel shoes. Yes. I'm going 1.5. Not good. Yes. Like I said, it's enough of a train wreck where I'm going to watch every episode just to see how bad. And I might even turn them off. <laughs> We're going to see. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I usually watch everything, but if it gets too boring and lame, it's going to get turned off. But we'll give it a shot. Powerful. All right, guys. Well, I hope you powerfully enjoyed this powerful episode of She-Hulk. We also have Iron Man news and the top 10 video games from the 90s we'd like to see rebooted. Well, we just ask you one thing before we wrap this up. Please tell a friend about our podcast. And until next time, you've just enjoyed the Amazing Pop Culture Podcast. Thank you for listening to the Amazing Pop Culture Podcast. The Amazing Pop Culture Podcast is available everywhere fine podcasts are found. Please leave a rating and review where you listen to podcasts. Like and follow the Amazing Pop Culture Podcast on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And shop our Amazing Pop Culture merch. This has been an Amazing Pop Culture Podcast production. 